I've never, never even seen a dormouse, let alone held one. Absolutely incredible experience. I'm Youssef Rafiq and I'm a zoologist and former zookeeper. I've spent years working with animals, so I know how tough, but also rewarding it can be. But now I want to try some of the more unusual wildlife jobs out there and meet the dedicated people behind them to find out if I have what it takes. I've come to the Isle of Wight to meet someone who protects one of the UK's most secretive and vulnerable mammals, the hazel dormouse. Now, dormice are notorious for being pretty hard to find and they don't particularly like the rain, which is a shame because it's raining quite hard right now. But I've got faith, I reckon we're going to find ourselves a dormouse today. First things first, it's time to meet Ian, who arguably has the best job title in the world. Hiya. Good morning. How are you doing? Not bad, thanks. Good to meet you. Now Ian, your official job title is a dormouse officer, which is probably the coolest job title I've ever heard. What kind of thing does that involve? So what I do basically, are we, we manage a national dormouse monitoring programme that gives us an idea of how well dormice are faring in, in the UK and in, in Britain as a whole. And also we manage the dormouse reintroduction programme that aims to reintroduce or put dormice back from areas from which they become extinct. But I've been doing this for 20 years uh, and I must admit there's still a fascination in seeing a dormouse, in handling dormouse, but also it's a real appeal in terms of training people People, um, but ultimately it's trying to help and conserve um, this very rare species. Despite how rare they are, I've still got hope that we'll see one today. The Isle of Wight is one of their last strongholds, as dormouse numbers have fallen by more than 51% since the year 2000. And they're still seriously threatened by climate change, habitat destruction and changes to woodland management. Dormice are a protected species, but licensed dormouse officers like Ian use artificial nest boxes to help monitor the individuals that we have left. So there's, okay, so there's a dormouse nest in this one. So we get it off the tree and have a look. Brilliant. So a nest is a good sign that there's... Yeah, a nest activity. is a good sign that there's, there's activity. Okay. Um, and generally at this time of year, you will find dormice in nests. Right. So a nest is a good sign, yes. And this cloth is just to stop them from... Running out, yeah, basically escaping out the back of the box. Yeah. Being arboreal, dormice spend most of their time in the trees. They build their nests further down the trunk and hibernate on the ground under the roots and leaf litter. So, it's a dormouse nest. Um, oh, yeah. It's quite a tight woven structure there. So is that this mainly plant material they use? For the yep. Yeah. It's, it doesn't feel like anyone's at home, I'm afraid. No. Oh. It's quite cold. Good to see a nest though. It is. Building a cosy nest is vital for dormice because they spend up to six months hibernating through the winter. They tuck themselves into a ball of plant material ready for a nice snooze. So after doing this for quite a few years now, do you, do you still get that same sense of joy when you're checking these boxes? I think uh, to see a dormouse um, is a privilege. Yeah. And I think to try and understand their ecology, try and understand the habitats to live with is, is, a, is a lovely thing to be able to do. They put a lot of maternal care into the young. Yeah. And that long period of maternal care is actually a bit like us, really. Because yeah. yeah. we put a similar amount of care into our young. So perhaps it's one of the appeals for dormice is actually they're a bit like us, really. Oh, and, yeah. and also they sleep for six months of the year. Oh, who was one of us to do that? When they're not sleeping, dormice are busy foraging through the trees. So Ian uses footprint tunnels attached to branches to look for evidence that dormice are in the area. Let's have a look and see if there's anything on this footprint tunnel. So, um, oh, you can see some of those yeah. triangular pad marks down there. So those are, those are shown as dormice. Okay. So what this is, this is a, a fairly new method really of a footprint tunnel. So we have masking tape at e either end mm -hmm. and the ink we use is olive oil and human grey charcoal. Okay. On the basis, if it's okay for us, it should be okay so for dormice. Safe, safe yeah. um, and these are then checked every two weeks. So we'll yeah. record here because what we're trying to see is how widespread dormice are okay. through this woodland. So although we didn't find any in that box, it just goes to show they are yeah, in this they are, area. Yeah, yeah, they are around. Yeah. yeah, wow. So let's go and check the next yeah. one. What encourages them to go in the tunnels? Like uh, they're rodents, so they're small and curious. Oh, that's, that's, <laughs> it. that's it, basically, yeah. <laughs> right, so we've found your dormouse. You have. So we've got to put masks on just to keep the dormice safe. Yeah, it's just there's some evidence of actually um, that, that humans have transmitted COVID, COVID to small rodents. Okay. We don't know whether that's true of dormice, but better just be cautious. Yeah. This female is getting ready to go into a deep sleep-like state called torpor to conserve her energy until spring. 
She needs to be weighed to make sure that she has enough fat reserves to make it through the winter. So the weight of that is... Oh, pretty good. 15, 20, 24 grams, and the bag should be four grams, so it's 20 grams. 20 grams, so yeah. she's quite well Yeah, so it's a good, good weight for good her, weight. certainly. Finding a dormouse that's a good weight is extra exciting, as with climate change, it's now more important than ever that they're healthy. Warmer, wetter winters trick sleeping dormice into thinking that it's spring, meaning they can wake up early and either become too cold or wet, or have limited options for food. Now that she's been recorded, this female is ready to go back into her box. Does that mean I get to hold her? You do. Oh, brilliant. So, first thing to do would be take your coat off. Yeah, okay. Um, because they do climb exceptionally well. Do they? Yeah, and you really don't so, want one disappearing inside your clothing. I mean, <laughs> might you'll, take her home with me. You'll notice my sleeves are rolled up for that very yeah. reason. So there's no real way of doing it, you just sort of... When she starts to move, she'll move very quickly. Okay. Keep your hands well in the bag. There you go. Oh, she's so soft. Okay, you happy? Yeah. yeah, I'm happy. Happy? So we're going to put her, you can post her back into this box. Okay. There we go. She just goes in. So I sometimes leave the tail out. Look at that tail. Here she goes. Just encourage that back in a bit. Another way of checking for dormice in an area is to look for evidence of them feeding with nut searches. This is a fruit in hazel. I can see some hazelnuts around. Yeah. No, oh, look, there looks like one that's oh, well, yeah. been opened by a hazel dormouse. Um, so they make they make teeth marks that go round the, the edge of the nut because when they eat this, they eat this on the tree. Okay. So they'll be hanging on the tree and yeah. uh, picking a hazelnut off and, and uh, sitting there on the tree eating it. Takes them about 20 minutes to open, take the kernel out and when they're finished they drop the nut on the ground. 20 minutes? Yep. <laughs> That's a long process. Shortly after, we find another nest. Have a good rummage. So far, we've only been looking for adult dormice, but this box has a surprise. So we've just come across a, another nest with more young in. These guys are really small, they're called pinks, which means they're only about a week old. They're very, very young. Uh, but because of that, we don't want to disturb them, so we've put the nest straight back. But this is quite exciting from my point of view. It's been quite a long time since we've seen breeding dormice in this woodland, even though the habitat looks fantastic. I suspect because there's such an abundance of natural nesting sites, so yeah, that, that's where they kind of are. Yeah. Um, but no, it's, it's fabulous to, to actually know they're there and see them is, is really nice. Yeah, I feel very lucky. <laughs> right, let's Which go see if we can through. That. Uh, good question. <laughs> no, I think it's down here. I don't know how you find your way. Everywhere looks exactly the same to me. <laughs> It's time to head home, if we can find a way out, that is. We've come to the end of the day now, and it's been a busy one. It turns out there's a lot of hard work that goes in to being a Dormouse officer. Um, and it's really also made me appreciate just how many challenges these animals face, and why it's so important that there are people like Ian out there doing their bit to help save the species.